Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and welcome to a new episode. This past Wednesday, I released a video detailing the benefits of sex, masturbation, and orgasms for both men and women. And I backed that shit up with some good old-fashioned fucking science. However, some viewers posted some interesting comments that I thought warranted a follow-up video for a little clarification. So, let's dig right in, shall we? A viewer commented that masturbation in men down-regulates androgen receptors in the brain and upregulates particular estrogen receptors. You mentioned androgen receptors in the brain specifically, and while this would certainly negatively affect masculine social behavior and mindset in men, I could only find three studies that support your statement, and none of them were actually on humans. They were all rodent model. Now, I'm not saying that this couldn't be the case for human males, but bear in mind that rodent and human physiology is different. So while this is interesting, I cannot say that it's conclusive for human males. There is likely a biological reason that this occurs in rodents, a species which does copulate and reproduce at a very high rate. I theorize that this may occur to subdue the sex drive in male rodents for a short period of time after mating, from a one to seven days according to the papers. But I just want to stress that this is just my theory. That all being said, I certainly would not jump to conclusions to suggest that human males avoid sex, masturbation, and ejaculation. Moving along. Another viewer remarked that the effects of porn use on a case-by-case -case basis and subsequent hyperstimulation can be serious, and recommended that people not view my previous video as an excuse to watch porn, but rather pursue a loving relationship. First, and especially in the case of women, as I demonstrated in my video, I agree with the loving relationship suggestion. Seeking a quality relationship can most certainly uh, be a fulfilling pursuit. A key word on quality. However, what are the effects of pornography on both our minds and on our health? According to one paper from 2014, a greater consumption of pornography appears to lead to a change in neuroplasticity as a result of intense stimulation of the reward system. This may pose a threat of addiction. That being said, according to a 2015 paper, and contrary to popular concerns, there is very little evidence associating pornography consumption with negative impacts on sexual desire, erectile health, or orgasmic difficulties. Nonetheless, acquiring an addiction is far from healthy, even if it's only a possibility and not a guarantee. Addictions can negatively impact your relationships, career, and interfere with the quality of your life in general. My advice is to limit or avoid pornography intake and instead apply that sexual energy to an existing relationship or the pursuit of one, especially if you are someone who is prone to addictions. And now on to mineral concerns. One viewer remarked that frequent ejaculation depletes zinc and therefore lowers testosterone. This is actually true and it is why I have many times in the past recommended that sexually active individuals be cognizant of their daily zinc intake. Research has demonstrated that a deficiency in zinc can lower serum testosterone levels in normal young men by 73% in just 20 weeks. In fact, further research has demonstrated that a deficiency in zinc not only decreases serum testosterone, but also semen volume. And just a single typical ejaculation can deplete you of just over half of a milligram of zinc, or about 5% of your daily requirements. So yeah, if you are sexually active, even if that just involves some manner of jerking the gherkin, you most certainly should monitor your zinc intake each day. Which segues me into the final comment I wanted to address, which is a bit, um, graphic. Just a heads up. A viewer asked that if semen were to be ingested, would the zinc be absorbed by the body? Now, the viewer actually used the word reabsorb, so I assume uh, that you're talking about consuming your own semen? Hey, to each their own, but whatever the case, I will answer purely from an absorption standpoint alone. And I would say that the answer is yes. My reasoning? It has been shown that approximately 97% of semen composition is absorbed by the vagina during unprotected intercourse. The 3% approximately that isn't is the sperm content. And bear in mind, this doesn't just include the zinc, but also water content, uh, sugars, hormones, and mood-elevating compounds like endorphins and serotonin. 
In fact, women who generally have unprotected sex with their partners report significantly better moods and fewer depressive symptoms than those who only use condoms. So back to your question, if the content of semen is absorbed by the vagina during intercourse, then I don't see why ingesting it orally wouldn't deliver similar values, if not the same. More, actually, if you consider that you'd be swallowing the sperm, too, for what it's worth. But I must issue a word of warning here. Uh, I am not blanketly advocating unprotected sex or the swallowing of ejaculate. There is a risk of sexually transmitted diseases and, in the case of vaginal sex, pregnancy. And this should be fucking obvious to everyone, assuming the education system still teaches basic health and biology. So, if you're looking to make a cream pie, be sure it is with a healthy monogamous partner. Be sure some form of contraception is in place, unless you don't mind the possibility of crotch fruit falling. And be sure they're vegan. Did you see what I did there? Anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed this episode, and I hope it clarified some items from the previous video. And do like and share this video if you did. Also, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. You wouldn't want to miss out on more golden gems such as this. Otherwise, till we meet again, my friends.